Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in crypto and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests we're going to get valuable insights from Bitcoin holders from 2011, 2013 to show us where things are going and if this bull run is more like 2013 or 2017 or a combination of both. So we'll take a look at what's going on there, but we'll also take a look at also an update about the iTrust crypto IRA. And again, do not buy iTrust, I'll explain in a second. We'll take a look at uh, Bitcoin and real estate. Then finally, we'll break it all down into what it means between the 2013, 17 and the bull run of today. So. We'll get to all those things, but first take a look at what's going on into the market today. Thursday, beautiful day. Uh, 2.73 trillion, we're up a, a whopping 1%, watch out. But uh, that's not the big story. The big story is just how we've just been chugging along and doing pretty well. So the sentiments, we're using uh, Trade the Chain, of course, for sentiment analysis. And we're looking at 62.3 for the Bitcoin price. And there's been some pretty big movements uh, as far as crypto, Ethereum, 4,500 bucks, uh, it's pretty good. Will it break 5,000? Yeah, probably at some point. Finance coin, 559. Solana, 241, and just been on an absolute tear. 6% in the last 24 hours. 6% in 24 hours, that's crazy. Uh, tell nobody cares. Cardano, uh, down again. 2%, what are you gonna do? But it still maintains about $2. And there's some, been some pretty big ones. Ah, Shiba Inu you know, down 22%. Sorry, Shiba holders, you knew it was coming. Terra, eh, so on and so forth. Uh, Axie Infinity, play to, play to earn game, 14%. Good for them. They seem to just keep going up. Crypto.com up 20% and so on and so forth and also uh avalanche is making a little bit of a, of a run because uh voyager has partnered up with them to do nfts and to uh do a lot of things with them so a nice little partnership has been uh, uh put into avalanche and that is essentially what is going on in the market and a grand scale and I just want to before we get into the interview i just want to talk about yesterday's i trust update and uh there was some new uh news yesterday also that uh, ira uh, surpasses 3.5 billion in trading volume. They went from uh, 2 billion to 3.5 billion in transaction volume in only four months. Pretty good. But what I said yesterday, I said, do not get into iTrust. Do not buy iTrust because they are doing away with the fees of 29.99 per month. And if you don't know what iTrust is, it's uh, over there on the uh, upper left-hand corner. That is a crypto IRA. IRA, if you don't uh, know for the United States citizens, you can use different types of IRAs, uh, traditional SEP or uh, a Roth, which is everything that you put in that Roth IRA is post-tax, meaning that once you put things into it, let's say Bitcoin's at 60,000, then you take it out when it goes to, I don't know, half a million dollars, you pay this much in taxes, 0%. And that is how Peter Thiel did it when he put all his PayPal stocks in, he took them all out, billionaire paid zero in taxes. But I said yesterday, don't get into it because they're changing things. First of all, it used to be that if you use my link, you could get uh, one month free. That is going away because there's going to be no uh, fees of $29.99 per month. And the bigger question was, well, is that for all the new customers or even the existing customers? And I just verify with iTrust and yes, it is for existing customers and for new customers. So you're gonna get no fees for them to manage your iTrust account. Now there's fees if you're going to trade within your account, which is fine. You can trade in your and you can trade within your Roth IRA account. It's one percent. However, no taxes. So just uh, take that into consideration. And then also, everybody who signs up uh, will get $100 in Bitcoin rewards. But the link is in the description. It looks just like this. We also did a deep dive video, which uh, just I just take you through what a Roth, a SEP, a traditional IRA is and what uh, um, iTrust actually does. So just take a look at that. The link is also in the description right near the, uh, the affiliate link. And then lastly, just so you know, those fees do not go away until November 15th. So if you're going to sign up for an iTrust crypto IRA account, wait till the 15th. That's all you got to do. And that's really what's going on. So that is the first part here. And now let's just jump in to uh, the interview. Uh, and actually it is uh, with Diddy from the Bitcoin family, a gentleman who sold everything in 2017 and went deep into Bitcoin. But if you didn't know it, he also did the same or a big moves in 2013. I'm going to talk about also an investor I met uh, in 2011 or from 2011 who invested into Bitcoin. So let's jump right in. I go, yeah, as promised. So uh, we've got uh, Diddy back again from the Bitcoin family to talk to us about uh, the things that uh, have, have shaped this market. And uh, if things are the same or different, then we're going to take a look at some pieces. So Diddy, welcome back. 
Thank you, Rob, for inviting me again. And it's always an honor and it's always a pleasure to be on the channel. So um, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, good times, good times. So the first thing that, that we were talking about is I, I wanted to, well, first of all, if, if no one knows your story, you were in Bitcoin and everybody remembers your story about 2017 where you sold everything. You sold your, your houses, you sold your cars, you sold your businesses and put it all into Bitcoin early 2017 when Bitcoin was around a grand. But you were in Bitcoin before in 2013 and you were mining everything and you like, I don't really get, you know, like I, at some point you said, I got to get out and you got out for a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, we started mining in 2013. Exactly. And you know, in 2014, we had the first crash. So from $1,200 to $200. And that was the moment that I was like, oh shit, was that the good investment in mining rigs and all that stuff? <laughs> or should I sell everything now and break even with my investment? So that was the moment in 2014 that I slowly start to get out, but not fully, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. But I mean, now, I mean, you're, you're pretty well uh, fully vested. So what I want to do is, is go over just a couple of things with you. And that, was, that leads me to this point. I met a guy who's been in crypto longer than you since 2011. And when I tell you this guy's story, it's going to be pretty amazing because you're like, wow. I, when he told me, I was like, I would never, I would never be able to actually keep going uh, into, into Bitcoin from what he told me. And then we'll take a look at that. And also, I want to go over this, this chart. This is from Tech Dev, and what your opinions are as far as like, is this the same or is this different? And is this more like 2013 bull run, 2017 bull run, or completely uh, different? And then lastly, I just want to go over uh, Michael Saylor and his interview where he talks about it's a little bit better to own Bitcoin than to actually uh, pretty much everything other asset that's out there, even uh, investment in the properties like myself. So just real quick before we get into I, I know you got a great story about uh, you sharing the this same information with your kids uh, about uh, uh, getting into Bitcoin. But see, this is so this was the party I was at with this is Ryan Gorman this is Alex Mascioli, Alex Mascioli show this is Nick Mancini from Platy Punks and NFT fame. And then uh, there's me with my ridiculous smile. And this guy right here in the, in, in the, in the far right hand side, that's Raj. And I had just met him that night and he had been into Bitcoin since 2011. And I was like, okay, so tell me how easy it was back then. And he goes, no, no, you don't understand. He goes, uh, look, he goes back then to get Bitcoin. He goes there. I would have to actually meet people at the bank and I would have to put the money into their accounts and then tell them, hey, I put the money in your account, so could you please send me the Bitcoin? And he goes, you would just kind of hope and pray that they would do it. And he goes, back then it was way different. He goes, there wasn't tribalism because it was just, just Bitcoin. And he says, when we, it was all about sharing and getting it out to everybody. He goes, so like we would just, you know, throw Bitcoins around like it was nothing and it would just, you know, go all the way around. And he says, he goes, but over time, he said, I, he said that it was really a, a real cryptocurrency back then. And then the narrative came in as far as the store of value. And then he said, I was going to get out. But then when the store of value narrative came in, he says, okay, I can totally see that. And now with El Salvador, it's kind of back full circle to the currency. So I was like, you know, I told Roger, I go, if I had to be back then and invest in the crypto and see that vision 10, 20 years out, there's not a chance not a chance in hell I would have done it. I would have been out a long time ago. So Diddy, what do you think about that crazy story? Yeah, that's an amazing story. 2011 is so early. It's a, And I agree with it. You know, at that time, even 2013 was still difficult. You need to send money by post, all that stuff. So that is why I started to mine Bitcoin. I want to have Bitcoin, but there was no way for us in the Netherlands to buy Bitcoins like in an easy way, you know? So it's, yeah, yeah, I completely agree. A lot of things changed now, but at that time, it was so difficult. A short story, like like 20 seconds. We flew to Dubai uh, two weeks ago. And yeah. in the uh, uh, flight, the first movie I watched was the one from Ross Albrecht and Silk Road. I have never oh, seen yeah, the yeah. Silk Road. But in that movie, you can see that people spend 2.5, 4 Bitcoin, 6 Bitcoin, 7 Bitcoins on this online yeah. market shop. Uh, 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 that was so amazing to see. That people were spending those amount of bitcoins to stupid stuff, <laughs> and now it's like it's like one hundred thousand dollar. You know, it's like huge. I know it's crazy, right? Now, yeah. now we think of it like this huge, enormous asset. But back then, it was just like it was just like, well, that's like ten bucks, and then here yeah. you go. So, yeah. what makes me to believe is this: is if it was like that back then, what's it going to be like in the next five years, the next ten years, and God forbid, twenty, thirty years from now? Wow. So that's, that's it. Going to change a lot. I think so. So then, so then you were, 
the big thing uh, about that was, you know, just, just getting into it and then what you actually invest into. I know that you had a good story uh, as far before we got in about what you were showing your kids uh, as far as like what to invest into. Yeah, it's like this morning we had a discussion because the kids, they read the news and then the news was, yeah, everybody's talking about inflation. All the news, like presents for Christmas will become more expensive. The gas is becoming more expensive. Ikea is becoming more expensive. So the kids were asking me, how is this possible? And how do people then still, you know, keep their money and how do they still buy stuff? And then I yeah. started to talk to them. I, I, I took this paper. I started to write down some stuff on the paper. And uh, I, I told them, if you had 300,000 euros last two years ago, and you kept it on the bank account, at that moment, you could buy a house in the Netherlands. Now, two years later, if you still have that 300,000 euros on the bank, you can't buy a house anymore because the house prices like increased tremendously. And then they were like, but uh, how, why do we do the Bitcoin stuff? And then I told them, if you would have bought for 300,000 euros two years ago, Bitcoins, you would have had 100 Bitcoins, which nowadays would have a value of 6 million, which would buy you 20 of these houses. And they were like, oh, this, that's, that's, that's why everybody believes in Bitcoin. See, that is what a store of value, and that is what goes exactly uh, against inflation. We, for us, as the Bitcoin family, life yeah. becomes cheaper every day. All our friends that have their money on the bank accounts, life becomes more expensive every day. It's completely opposite. And that was the first time I saw them thinking like, ah, okay, now I start to understand why we took that step, why we <laughs> sold our toys five, five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, insane. And you know what? So like when, when you were talking to me, when you just said that, shared that story, I wish, and maybe you watching the video right now, you probably think to yourself, man, I wish my parents would have sat me down and showed me these types of numbers. So later on, it wouldn't be like the same old a song of dance, which was, you got to save your money. You got to put it in the bank. You got to let it sit there and just do nothing with it. That was what I was taught. And all the way going through, also get a job, work at the same company for 30, 40 years and, and get a pension. That is out the window now. And I wish, I mean, even back then, it would be very difficult to do. And then the next thing I was thinking of is all the things that we talk about on, on, on my channel and Diddy's channel. And just as a reminder, there's a link in the description. It's the very first one. That's the, the uh, Bitcoin family. Go check them out. It's always got daily good news and uh, a little bit of uh, information as far as where Bitcoin is going. When we do these things, it really comes down to we want you to be successful too because guess what being here just doing our thing is is fine but we need people around us and uh i don't know about you diddy but all my friends still got the nine to five job and all my family members still have the nine to five job so i'm trying to get them off that merry-go-round and hopefully i have more people to hang out with <laughs> that's, that's really what it comes down to it's it's really frustrating to be that long in the, in the industry like we are together you know um you try to convince your family, your brother, or your sister, or your best friends to do the same and to manage their capital in a different way. They don't understand yeah. this. They don't believe this. And it's very frustrating to see uh, that they could have achieved the same uh, profits that we are achieving. But it's, I don't know what it is in people. I think most people um, live or in fear or in greed. And that, um, you know, that, that makes their um, thoughts a little bit, compressed and uh, if, if you look at what is possible with capital and i think the capital needs to work for you and not the other way around so um that is why money management and education for kids mm -hmm. at the moment is that important yeah and i will send so, and be, before we get on the next piece i will just tell you this i offered my brothers both of them i said i'm gonna give you 500 bucks all i want you to do is open up a voyager account and i want you to put in a cryptocurrencies these yeah. specific ones bitcoin ethereum and a couple other ones i, I, I talked about i'm gonna give you free money and I said, but you got to do it this weekend. And they go, that's great. And then the weekend came and passed. And I go, what happened? Did you guys do it? Ah, no, ah, we're good. And I'm like, what? I'm going to give you 500 bucks to do it. And they still wouldn't do it. And then my one of my, one of my brothers came back to me and he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty well, well uh, vested into a visa uh, because he's a traditional finance guy. And I'm like, okay, well, how did Visa do? He's like, well, I went up like, you know, three to five X over the last uh, 10 years or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyhow, so I, I, I tweeted out and I said, everybody remind me of this in a year. The Bitcoin price is this, this is when I offered and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's just, I think some people are like, is it going to, is this a scam? Uh, I don't really know too much about it. And also 
I don't really just want to, I don't really have the time to make all this. Really, it comes out of the time. Like, do they like, do I really want to do all this with the time? Because a lot of things that I do don't really pan out, you know, in certain situations. So whatever. It's so difficult. that, you know, I, one, one uh, thing more. So I talk always yeah. too much. I know you think, did he stop talking? But my brother was here <laughs> like four weeks ago. Or no, like six weeks ago, yeah. two months ago. He was here in Portugal visiting me. Yeah. And then he started to talk about Bitcoin again. I told my brother, Gino. I will talk one more time about it, Bitcoin with you because you never trust me. Yeah. You need to invest one Bitcoin now from your savings because else we don't talk. He bought one Bitcoin around, um, it was around 40K. Oh, and now, and now nice. every week he's calling me he's like, okay, I'm already like almost 30K in profit, did you? I said, yes. Like you should have sold your house and <laughs> bought all the way Bitcoin. But he yeah. finally starts to understand now. But it's, uh, yeah. It's a rough, it's, rough road for five years. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's what's going to take five years. Which you know what? Which leads me to my next, my next point. This was a uh, an art uh, interview with uh, Michael Saylor at CNBC, and he talks about the same thing you just talked about. Which was, he said, "Look, you can either put it into into Bitcoin, or if you want to do it into other assets, you can." He goes, "But compare it to like the housing market." He goes, "Unless you're going to get into an asset where it's going to go up 130 percent every year, which is kind of." what the uh, uh, return is for Bitcoin, which is not every year. I think he's taking a uh, you know two, three, four year type of time frame. Uh, he says, you can do that, but why do it? Because it's going to be so much more difficult. And he said, the only thing that would make sense is if you like run a hotel, maybe, or if you do rentals. So did he same thing here? When you're telling your kids and you talk about the, the houses, what do you tell them? Yeah, I tell them the same. I, I just tell them, you know, we are, we, the world is changing. We, we prepare the kids for the future, not for the past. So in the future, we won't need to own those houses anymore. Everything mm -hmm. is slowly decentralizing. You know, you, it, it starts with bicycle that you can rent and, and drive from A to B, and it will go to motor scooters from A to B, cars, houses. Everything in the future will be not owned by us, but by used by us. So I tell them, don't invest in those stuff. It's like 6% return on investment on, on real estate, for example, every year. Well, it's like 150% in Bitcoin. But to be very honest, Rob, even we, even me and my wife have discussions about it because we are educated in the 90s. And now that Bitcoin is going up so much, our capital is increasing tremendously. Even yeah. we still have these back head thoughts from, oh, should I, should I buy a house again? Should we buy back a house of Bitcoin? And every time that I need to remind myself, yes, but if you do that, you get all the stress, you're fixed on the place, you don't get the return on investment that you get in, in, in Bitcoin. So... Even for a guy that is already a long time in Bitcoin, that is still a difficult uh, mindset. But we try to educate our kids in the right way. Perfect. Perfect. And I want everybody rem to remember what Diddy just said there. For a person who's been in crypto for as long as Diddy, it's still hard in the back of his head to do the things that he needs to do. So just remember, like, if you ever think to yourself, like, ah, I just failed because I couldn't hold on or, or I couldn't do this, it's natural. It's normal. And that's just how it goes. And there's, and I will say, like for me, there's one caveat. We're, we've been talking on this channel about I'm going to be funding that that new uh, investment property, and the way I'll be doing it is just taking loans out against my crypto uh, instead of selling my crypto, which is a taxable event, and uh, we'll go that way. We've already done it once with Celsius. We're gonna do it again with Celsius, but this is just a larger amount and just go from there. So I'll bring you everybody along. Educate me in that. You should educate me in that next time. <laughs> I got it. You know what I, I what I'm do, Diddy. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show everybody how the sausage is made from the beginning to the end, and I'll make a video so everybody knows exactly what to do. Even like how to find properties. I'll even give you my uh, uh, my real estate agent. Uh, guy's a good, good, great guy over here in, in Puerto Rico. So there's that, and then this is the question that everybody has been asking, and you know it was coming, Diddy. The question is this: If we're taking a look at the cycles and how the bull run is playing out. I keep hearing a lot of people saying, this is not like 2017, this is more like 2013. And then some people say, no, 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 it's the same thing. And then some people say, no, this is totally different. So first of all, is this somewhat similar? Because you were around for both, for all of them actually. Yeah. And then what do you think it is and where do you think things are going? Um, for me, it's 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 two things. The emotions are the same as every bull run. <laughs> it's it's always the roller coaster <laughs> emotions. It's always yeah. like, is it going to end? Is it going to be a bear market? When, uh, for me, this one is a combination of 2013 and 2017. I think the first part of the bull run is exactly the 2013 one, where we peak, where we bottom again. But I yeah. don't believe that November will be the same as in 2014, where in November we had a 500% run all the way up uh, to $1,200. 
Um, yeah. I think the second part of this bull run will, will, will be more like 2017. So that will mean topping up somewhere in December, January um, at the top of the logarithmic growth curve, which is around 137,000 or 140,000, yeah. depending on which month that we uh, and, and reach that one. So for me, it's completely a combination of those two uh, bull runs. Um, yeah, if you if you if you put both the bull runs on the chart, which I have done a lot of times in my videos, you can also yeah. see it. You can see we have been following 2013, but now nothing is impossible in Bitcoin. But if we would follow 2014 November month, yeah, that yeah. would mean that at the end of this month we are at 130k. And uh, for me, that is still a little bit unbelievable. I think it will take some a uh, little bit more time. So okay, so we're looking at hey, you know what? 130K, I think that's what everybody's pretty much around. Some people will say like 250K. Some people will say, no, nah, no, nah, it's going to be to, you know, uh, 160. But I've always said around between 100 and 150K, I'm pretty happy. And then, of course, everything else kind of goes from there. And I think this is, if you're talking about uh, logarithmic, are we talking about this one right here, Diddy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we are, then we are talking about this one. And, and a lot of people think that we now will have an extended bull run, which means um, that we won't have this huge correction of 80%. Um, when we reach that top, which would make it maybe possible to have another prolonged Bitcoin run all the way to the stock to flow model, uh, I think of 288k. Um, but for me, that is still, I, I need to see that. I understand the philosophy and the thoughts about behind it. I understand that people think that because Michael Saylor and all of those people um, invest in Bitcoin for the long term are not going to sell at the top. So we won't have that emotional crash of 80%. Because right. the more people huddle, the less big this crash will be. But, you know, with all the leverage trading that is being played out and the SEC and all of that stuff that now we just don't know. So um, for me, I think the new bottom in the new all-time high in the new bear market would be higher than 40,000 US dollars. So for me, whatever happens, I'm, I'm a very happy man because I got in <laughs> before 40K. And I think people need to play it long term. That's a, that's a great point. And, and I'll leave it like with this. Uh, this is a, a phrase I always remember. Time in the market is more important than timing the market. And usually if you just take a long term approach, it works out pretty well, uh, especially in this situation with Bitcoin. So that's what we got. So Diddy, that's that's it for today. I, mean, I hope it sounds like the, you're pretty bullish. The things you're talking about uh, sound pretty good. And I think that uh, this might ease some ease some fears that people have. But do you have any uh, words of wisdom before we take off? Um, no, I, I don't have really words of wisdom, but um, I just want to enjoy everybody a lot of fun during the last uh, the next couple, two of months in this bull run. I think it's going to be an amazing time. I'm flying to Mexico to celebrate it there with a huge uh, crypto mm. community. I'm that bullish. They will even take a bottle of champagne with me that says 100k which i will open in <laughs> mexico um, I, i'm i'm positive that we will reach the 100k so uh, i just wish uh, wish everybody a lot of fun with the, the last part of this ride and then i always want to remember to people to zoom out in the bitcoin charts and try to zoom in at life don't freak out of the minute charts but freak out of every minute in the day you know try to enjoy life to the fullest every single minute of day that is the most important thing i think um, in life excellent Giddy, fantastic interview yet again. So everybody, that is it for today. I'm just going to leave it right there. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. And that's it. So we appreciate you listening and coming by. And uh, me and Diddy, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.